Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thanks for stopping in. Okay. In this video here, we're going to get back on this little cutie. This little six slant bar seven pert five. And I'm going to go digging my conics on my motor shelf. And I believe I have a six horse, which I believe the seven pert five is pretty much the same, with the exception of maybe the carburetor jets intake. That kind of thing. So, I got her cleaned up and pretty dry, and uh, so I'm going to wrestle up the power head uh, and see if we can't put this little cutie back in service. It's a long shaft, which I like, and the whole lower from the pan down seems to be in pretty good shape. So, with that, I thought the power head that was on it is roached, but... Uh, I think I got one so we'll get to doing that and then uh, I'll probably take this old power head I just want to open it up and see what what it looked like in its innards you know in the in the deep 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 innards like the Davy Jones innards I want to see what that thing looks like inside and uh, but first Do you like those salmon boys and girls? Well, my buddy Charlie, he, uh, his son is a commercial fisherman on a salmon boat. Well, I think he does quite a few different kinds of fishing. But anyway, I got a bag right here in a cooler. Yes, I do. And in that bag, in that cooler, is some ice in the cooler and up under that ice is a salmon now for me this is kind of new territory see because I asked my friend Charlie I said I want you to have somebody or you bring me in here one of them chum salmon that I know of out of all the years I've lived here and everything, I've never caught one that, you know, came out of the ocean that was silver and bright and chrome looking. I have caught uh, the chums in the rivers years ago, but they get all colors. They get all striped looking and, and as they hit fresh water and their, their, their face just becomes hideous. Hideous. And they get these big teeth, their nose curls all up, and they get these big old teeth. And they call them dog salmon. Now I've heard two, two uh, theories on that name. Um, the one that I hear is the dog salmon, chum salmon, go up the rivers and um, people catch them way up the rivers when they've already turned into these ugly dog looking things and they catch them and they feed them to their dogs uh, people that use sled dogs and stuff like that they catch them and feed them to the their dogs hence the name dog salmon but I've also heard people say they get that name from the way they turn when they hit the fresh water and they get the, the fangs and canines like a dog. I don't know. I don't know which one's which. But all I know is I was told that they are real good smokers. So we're going to get this one out, get it filleted up and brined up, and then we're going to get that thing in the smoker. But I'm going to show it to you. I haven't even seen it yet. Yeah, no. Oh, it's a big one. 
Woo! Looky there. Ain't that a nice looking sand? Well, that's what they call a chum. A dog salmon. So I don't think you want to see that, this part. But I'm going to get it filleted up. Get it brined up in the brine. And then we're going to get it on that smoker. I'll be back. Well, here's the engine, the power head. As you can see, good runner, six horsepower. That I was hoping, but uh, it is different indeed. So, for anybody who was curious, the six horsepower and the 7.5 have different bolt patterns on the bottom of the powder head. I knew it as soon as I saw the T-stat on this one. And the T-stat the on this one has, has it on top and I would imagine but I'm not sure. Could I replace the head? Or is it bigger? It's certainly got bigger bolts. These are smaller. And the CDI bolts in different. So I don't think you could. I think this is a bigger head. Yeah, the bolt spacing, so you can see this is, the bolt spacing's way different. Completely different motors. So, the 7.5, and I'm not sure what year that thing is. Does it got a tag? I don't see one. But anyway, they're both close to the same vintage, but they are different. So... I had that one sitting in my conics on my power head shelf and and then I had another one over there in the bone pile and it's the same as this one so and it's too bad because I wanted to get this long shaft put together I think it would be nice and I could use it on my bay runner skiff and all um, so I'm not sure what swaps out, if anything, with a 7 parent 5. I know they made an 8 horse later. Um, but anyway, so I'm still going to part out or open up that other, that 7.5 power head and uh, take a look in its innards. So let me get that and we'll get to doing that. Alrighty, here's the uh, seized up power head. I think I'm going to pop it apart. I got to get that flywheel off there too, but I'll get that. I get that. Oh, let's keep those kind of in order and let me get a puller pop the old flywheel what size okay okay I pop that flywheel um, off of there I got it off, off of, I got it off of there so. 
<laughs> hey man. Hey man, why'd you do that, man? Being a little difficult. Oh. Mm. Head bolts, the bigger one, right? Yeah. Here's my, ooh, look at all that. Cut ocean. There's my head bolts. I'm gonna keep them separate from the little guys. That's head bolts. Head bolts. Where's the little guy? That's a little guy. Uh oh. Is that all of the little ones? Okay. So there's those. Now let's get the head bolts out of here. There. Can I get them? Can I get them? Hey. Hey. That should be it, I think. Now, like I said, this thing's been rebuilt before. Well, I'm guessing. Because of the blue RTV that ain't factory that's for sure so let me get a little tap it hammer and see if we can give it a little tap it how about you man how about you how about you all how bad she is. Wow. Really not that bad. Except for all the needle bearings on the center bearing are going to fall out. Because the cap stuck in there. So we want to make sure we get all them. So let me, there we go. <laughs> a little bit of salt in there. Um, so, let me get them. Get me a little baggie. They're not, it's not near as bad as I thought it would be. It ain't near as rusted in the lower end as I thought it would be. Gosh, I just don't know if I could hone that up, though. But, right now, I got to go check on my babies. I got to check on my babies. i show you. i show you. Mm-hmm. 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 Ooh, what's there? There's my babies. I'll show you. We're sitting right at about 300 degrees. Oh, they're looking good. That's my babies. My wings. Don't that look good? Let's get that closed. Losing all my heat. They yeah, still got a little bit to go. I call them my babies because I like this sweet baby rays. I like that wing sauce. That good stuff. Come on. 
get my needle bearings or anything. Mixed up. Other needle bearings it goes like that. Top, bottom. You see, I got marks. Well, I took the torch and I heat it all around here and on the side and over here and on the top, and that pistionus won't budge. So, the trip down to Davy Jones did her in. Um, the bottom cylinder really don't look that bad. And the ring don't look that bad either. Um, the, 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 rings, the piston don't look that bad. The rings aren't all stuck. I mean, it's rusty and grungy and all that. But... That could possibly hone up. I mean, it went swimming, so it's not all scored and everything. And But that top one just won't let loose. I might, I'll put some magic potion in there in that top cylinder and let it soak overnight and, and see. But I don't think it's going to be, even if, I got the piston out. This is not something I could sell because I just, it this just ain't how you do it. Um, but it would be a motor. Like I said, it's a long shaft and all that. I could use it on my Bay Runner skiff and possibly get it going again. But I just don't think that piston is going to budge. I think this whole length of it there is just solid rust in there all the way around it. outboard abuse at its highest. You can see there's quite a few empty slips. Yep. A lot of boats out chasing them salmon. Chasing them salmon. There's a typical smaller but typical salmon saner right there. Got his net on the back and then his sane skiff. That's how they that's how they set up for them salmons. That's pretty much the standard operation. That's probably about a 32, 36 foot LeClear, something like that. There's the Ferry Tustamina coming in. That's how we get a lot of stuff to and from the island and 
vehicles. That's pretty much the only way you get them to and from the island. That boat right there is going on 70 years old. Looks pretty good for her age. They are building a new one to replace her. We have another ferry that comes here called the Kennecott. But it's too big to tie up at that ferry dock there. And it's also too tall to get under the bridge. So it has to go out and around near island. That is one capable Alaskan sea craft right there. That boat has been responsible for many rescues in Alaskan waters. Because it may have been the only thing in a storm or whatever that had the capabilities to respond. The trusty Tusty, they call her. Beautiful old boat. I have been across the Gulf of Alaska many times on that vessel. Brought many vehicles to the island and from the island on that ship. The trusty Tustamaner. Look at them thrusters, take it right to the dock. Well, I got me a mixture, 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 mixture of uh, fitty fitty acetone automatic transmission fluid. Go ahead and spray some on the inside of that cylinder too, just to. And I'll let that soak. And uh, let me spray some on here too. So, we'll let that soak overnight, and we'll see if anything changes.
Well, sometimes things just, you know, don't work out like you want them to. And uh, in the case of the little Cody, that's going to be the case on that one. I haven't given up. You understand. But I've got to dig through my bone pile and so forth because I have somewhere another one of those um, power heads that's just like that one. And I looked at the uh, welch plug, the lead plug that's in the uh, the block on that thing and according to what I'm reading there it is not a 7.5 it is a 6 horsepower and uh, I think it was an 85 6 horsepower is what the serial number model number in the welch plug dates that thing to and gives the horsepower as it identifies it as a six horsepower well so that had to be a later version of the six horsepowers that i have because they all have the flat t stat cover on the top of the power head not on the head itself so it's different than a couple of six horsepower power heads that i got the bolt pattern's different, the head pattern's different. Um, but I only have one other of those somewhere. And I have yet to find where I rat hold it. But it, uh, that one has a thrown rod. But I, I don't see where that really does me any good. Because this one with the stuck pistonis, you understandus. Um, that cylinder head, could I hone it? Yeah, but it's really not, you know, and then take the pistons and whatnot out of the other ones and put in the submerged rusted power head, possibly, but um, it's not something I would sell to anybody, so it's something I'm going to put on the back burner unless I can find a decent uh, cylinder head. For, or cylinder block for it in my pile. I don't think I have another. Um, but I am going to look. But So that's where we're at. I'm the little cutie. It's just going to have to go on the back burner until I get a chance to dig around and uh, come across that, that other power head. And in the meantime, I'm building a Johnny Rood. I finished up the one uh, 2530 for my buddy. And he can go fishing now. And I've got another little yammy to take care of. And as I take care of that one, I'll continue on the uh, build of this 2530 Johnny Rude. It'll be a Johnny Rude in the truest sense of the word, Johnny Rude. I'm going to have Evan Rude sections and Johnny Rude sections and... It'll be a true Johnny Rude, but I hope to put all the bells and whistles on this one too. Electric start, um, uh, charge system rectifier, the whole, the whole bunch, and uh, cable tiller and all. So I'm just starting with a bunch of parts, and we're going to see if we can't make at least a good work outboard out of it. So even though I'm, we'll be doing some cosmetics on it, it'll mostly be just refurb try and make a good working motor for somebody that's my hopes for that one so it's getting a little late and as always that is one more hack from Kodiak thanks for watching more vids are coming on inside outboards with your host Cody Bass